ex-1MDB CEO Datuk Sharul Azral Ibrahim Halmi says former PM Datuk Sri Najib Razak recommended then Saim Darby's Muhammad Hazim Abdul Rahman to be the Troubled Fund's executive director. Sharul told the court today that Hazim's CV was handed to him in 2012 by Law Tech Joe and included Najib's notation recommending Hazim's appointment as executive director. Lo was also said to have told Sharul that Hazim's appointment was endorsed by Najib's principal private secretary, the late Dato Azlin Alias. However, there was no executive director position in 1MDB, so Sharul proposed that Hazim be made COO instead. Hazim eventually succeeded Sharul as 1MDB CEO in 2013 and oversaw much of the deals between 1MDB and the fraudulent ABBA Investment PJS Limited surrounding the Tun Raza Exchange development. Deputy Public Prosecutor Ahmad Akram Garib confirmed with the HMarkets.com today that Hazim will be the next witness to be called in the trial after Sharol finishes his testimony. The trial will resume on August 17th. The Socio-Economic Research Centre says Malaysia's economy likely hit bottom in the second quarter of 2020, contracting by a double-digit percentage. Malaysia's gross domestic product moderated sharply to a 0.7% growth in the first quarter of 2020 versus 4.5% in the first quarter of 2019 as a result of measures taken both globally and domestically to contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the second quarter, however, the economy likely fared even more poorly. SERC Executive Director Lee Hengui warns GDP growth for the second quarter could be the worst for the whole year, possibly contracting by more than 10%. As for 2020, GDP is seen shrinking by 3%. Lee believes the economy will see firmer recovery if a COVID-19 vaccine is found earlier than expected and more global economies turn the corner. Oversea Enterprise, which owns and operates the Chinese restaurant chain Oversea, has received a takeover offer from Dato Chai Wun Chat. Chai is the MD and substantial shareholder of Enzo and director of M3 Technologies. In an announcement to Bursa Malaysia, OEB said Chai is offering 30 cent per share, which is a 4.76 percent discount to the 31.5 cent closing price of volume weighted average market price prior to the notice. He intends to maintain OEB's listing on the ACE market post takeover. OEB has been loss making for the past three financial years. It made a net loss of 4.9 million ringgit in FY18 and continued to bleed in FY19 with a net loss of 4.5 million ringgit and 5.5 million ringgit in FY20. It was earlier reported by the HMarkets.com that property tycoon Tan Sri Desmond Lim is said to be one of the parties mulling to acquire an equity stake in OEB. Lim, however, has declined to comment on the matter. Sabah Dynamics wholly owned unit Sabah Dynamics International has backed a contract worth 350 million US dollars which is about 1.47 billion ringgit to build a data center at Musafa Abu Dhabi. In a statement to Bursa Malaysia, Sabah Dynamics says SDIL had on August 5th accepted the letter of award from new generation data center development company Future Digital Data Systems. The data center is part of FDDS's plan to set up data centers across the Middle East and North Africa region. These facilities aim to support the activities in Abu Dhabi and also provide services to the rest of the Gulf Corporation Council in meeting the needs of the market amid the emergence of cloud, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things, and big data analytics. Serba Dynamics says it is tasked with appointing specialist consultants and contractors to manage, design, procure, construct, and complete segments of the project. Work on the data center is scheduled to begin on September 1st and be completed within four years. Malaysia recorded 15 new COVID-19 cases today, pushing the country's total infections to 9,038 cases and total active cases to 200. 11 were discharged, bringing the number of recoveries to 8,713. There were no deaths recorded today. Health Director General Datuk Dr. Noh Hisham Abdullah says of the 15 new cases, five were imported involving three Malaysians and two foreigners, while the rest were local transmissions. Meanwhile, in the Dewan Rakyat, 
The long-awaited temporary measures for government financing COVID-19 Bill 2020 were tabled for first reading today. The bill, among others, seeks to temporarily increase the national debt ratio from 55% to 60% until December 31, 2022. A COVID-19 fund will also be set up under this bill.